Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at node red variables and I've labeled this part 2 because we have looked at node red variables before and in the previous video I showed you how to use the context, the flow and the global variables, how to store the variables and how to retrieve the variables. Now the reason it's part 2 and the reason we need to visit again is because in version 0.19 they added two new features and those features are the ability to store variables uh, multiple variables in one single command and what I consider even more important and more useful is the ability to store variables in the file system and that's so that if you restart the flow then you don't lose those variables so let's have a look at those and we'll start off with the multiple variables now, to get a single variable before you use this kind of syntax, variable v1 is flow.get v1 and v2 flow.get v2. Now, it's possible to get these two values in one command line and we just use this format here, variable values flow.get and notice this is an array and v1 and v2. Now, to retrieve them as v1, v2 though, we have to go through this extra step, step and we have to get v1 equals values 0 so it's the first element of the array and variable v2 equals values 1 the second element of the array now because of this I don't actually use this I tend to continue to use this I find that much easier now even though we're getting them from what looks like an array they are actually stored as individual variables and I'll show you that in a second when we look on at the example flow now to store them we use this format flow.set v1 and v1 v2 v2 that's the standard format which you, you should be used to and now we can actually use this format and again we put them into square brackets like an array and v1 is 1 and v2 is 2 those are the values now I don't like like this I don't use it I continue to use this format here but you should be aware of it and you can decide yourself on which one you prefer to use. Okay, so storing variables or context data in the file system. Now, I use the term variables in the documentation, Node-RED documentation, they use the term context data and it refers to the, the context, the flow and the global variables. So the first thing we need to do if you want to store the variables or the context data in the file system is to edit the settings.js file. Now this is the setting I use and basically creates two context stores, one in memory and the other one in the file system. Now the default configuration without this entry here in the settings.js file is to store the variables in, in memory only. So this setting here will create two context stores one in memory and one in the local file system and I've highlighted this or I've colored this in, in red this label here called file because it's important that you understand that this corresponds to this here so when we actually retrieve the variables from the file system we use this name here now if I had called this file store I would have to change this to file store so that's important the name here you have to use the same name when you're actually retrieving the the data so this is how you retrieve a variable from the um, the file system this is your context variable now I'm using context here I could use flow or I could use global and the same applies when we talked about storing multiple variables in one go I use the flow as an example we could have used context and we could have used global it makes no difference so variable count equals context.get count which is familiar but notice we need to add the file name here or the file pointer here and so we've got comma file and again for storing the variable in the file system we use context.set count count which is again is familiar and we tell it where to, where to get it from we're going to get it from the file here now if I omit this in other words if I don't have the comma file here it will just set it into memory and again if I admit this it will just retrieve it from memory so that's the standard way of doing things now when we say we're storing the variables or the context data in the file system uh, we are storing them in the file system but we're also storing them in memory so it first stores them in memory then periodically flushes them out into the file system and that period is set by default to 30 seconds 
it can be changed it, uh, there is a configuration that you can change and it's set again in the context storage I will put a link to the documentation which shows you how to make that change if you want to I don't see any reason to do that uh, I'd call that a, a more an advanced setting and I won't be covering it here but I say I will link to it in the disc video description below now because it flushes every 30 seconds it does mean you can still lose the data if the system crashes in between the flushes then you will lose data but you won't lose all of it because you will still have the the data that was saved 30 seconds prior to that okay so let's go on let's look at an example flow and I will demonstrate uh, storing multiple variables and storing variables in the file system okay so this is the example flow it's very simple and I'll make this available uh, for a download so we start off with the multiple variables so we have a function here and this is what we're going to use to get and, and set the variables so you can see here I'm using the values just like I did in the in the slide and we're getting the variables here we extract them using this format here and this is an array what I'm creating now I'm doing this for an example because remember this looks like an array but it isn't an array we'll see it when we look at the data as it's stored uh, I'm just logging it here and I use the flow.set to set them and I also use the flow.set to set the the data array so once I do this I'll show you what they look like as they're as they're stored so let's inject it and let's go over here and we look at the context data we look at the flow data and you can see my data array it's stored like that as an array and but notice the variables v1 and v2 they're stored as individual variables v1 and v2 and notice this here if you can read it, it just says memory only we're storing it in memory okay so let's look at storing variables in the in the file system now I've already configured the settings file and if I go to the change node here and you can see here I can actually get the the variable here from the flow I'm using a flow and I'm using a counter called count2 and I can set that value a count2 to, to well, I'm setting here to 22 but what I wanted to show you this is, should be familiar because this is standard is this extra icon here which lets me designate this as a memory only variable or a file variable so if I set it to here it will store count2 in file if I set it to here it will store it in, in memory now if you haven't done the settings file you won't see this here and let me just show you that quickly so here we have the same setup this is actually using a different flow and the settings file hasn't been edited on this one you can see here we don't have that icon on the side of here so we can only store these in memory we can't store it into the file system so let's go back to our flow and we'll look at this function node here and what we're going to do here is we're going to get a variable count and this one we're going to get from the file system you can see it here we've got the file and we're going to get a variable count one and notice it's got the same designation count here so it looks the same as this but I want to show you it's not so we can actually use the same name they are actually stored in two different locations and here I just initialize it to zero now I increment it count plus equals one and I increment count one plus equals one and I set the count count one and I set count here and into the file system so I'm storing this in the file system and I just send it out into the payload this is just so I can see it in the debug screen rather than sending it uh, to the console okay so let's deploy that and let me refresh that I've got the data in there I haven't got anything in here yet so if I just click on this one you can see I've set the count 2 to 22 and you can see here it's memory only now if we look over here you can see the value of count in the memory only count is, is set to 1 I've actually clicked this and the value of, uh, of count setting the file you can see the label file here is actually 29 uh, you can see I've been doing this quite a few times now if I go and click it again and refresh that you can see that goes up to 2 and that goes up to 30 and just do it again and we'll see it 
change. So even though they've got the same name, they're actually two different variables. This one is stored in memory and this one's stored on the file system. Now if I go and uh, restart Node Red, and I, I'm gonna have to go over to the console and, and reboot this. Okay, so I've rebooted here. You can see I've got the count in the file system at 32. It might be a different value that you saw before. That's because I had to re redo the recording on the video because um, I forgot to record it. Okay, uh, but you can also see that the in-memory one is, is cleared. So if I just click it again, and we get our memory count back again. And they, this just shows that if you restart Node Red uh, by storing um, variables or context data into the file system, then you can keep that and it's preserved against uh, restarts. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you've got any comments on the video, please leave them below. If you like the video, then click on the like button below. And if you'd like to get notified of new videos on the channel, then you can subscribe and don't forget to click on the notification bell. And if you use social media and like to share it, then please feel free. I do publish a newsletter on the website. It's a very occasional newsletter. And if you'd like to sign up for that, then just head over to the website. So until next time, goodbye.